From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a Ben J. Shap LLC production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Today, we're going to continue our discussion about the role gender plays in the career of a marketer. Joining us is Christine Mortensen, who is both the founder of Sparked, which is a B2B-focused content design and strategy agency. And outside of her role leading her company, Christine is also the creator of the Women in MarTech Facebook group, which is a group created with the initial goals of connecting women to book speaking opportunities, work on cross-collaboration, and to provide peer support. Yesterday, Christine and I shared our views of some of the challenges facing women and also the way that men treat women in marketing today. We talked about a lot of controversial topics. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I absolutely think that you should go back and give it a listen. But today, we're going to talk about the purpose of the group that Christine created. And we're going to talk about how gender specific peer groups are valuable for women. Here is our interview with Christine Mortensen, the founder of Sparked and the Women in Martech Group. Christine, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Great to have you back here. Yesterday, we talked about some of the most controversial topics I've ever raised on the MarTech Podcast. We talked about gender equality, sexual harassment, all sorts of fun stuff that face women and men in the workplace today, how men should be treating women. I appreciate you giving us the honest opinion about that. And today, I want to focus more on the group that you created and the purpose that it serves. So let's just talk about what the Women in MarTech group is. So the Women in MarTech group is a way for women to, first and foremost, get more speaking opportunities. We have seen over the years that a lot of times there are panels that are all men. They're also known as mannels. So trying to help event organizers be a little bit more aware and give them a place for them to go to find more women speakers. Secondly, it ended up turning into a really great community just to talk about the things that we need help with every day from help with an email campaign to coming up with strategy topics or how to deal with some HR issues are topics that have also been discussed within the group. So it's just a great gathering place for women to talk amongst their other women peers. So I think it was Michelle Robbins who I was talking to, who was a executive in marketing technology at Third Door Media. Now she's studying data science. I think it was Michelle, but one of the females that has been on this show mentioned the need for a peer group is important for women because women tend to find comfort in sharing similar experiences with other women. And to me, hearing that statement was the reason that I felt comfortable talking about the purpose of a women-only group and not thinking that it was necessarily women versus men, but women supporting women. Talk to me a little bit about the reason why women working specifically with an exclusive group of just other women provides value. I think it provides immense value because it is, you know, I try to avoid using the word safe space because it's so stigmatized these days, but it really is a place where you can have an open discussion about challenges that you're facing without the potential for being scrutinized by men. There's a lot of professional women's experience that when they speak up about any topic, their ideas are not well received. 
So we talked a little bit about this and going back into the history of business, specifically in the United States. I'm sure it's something that happens around the world. And in marketing, you know, the sort of iconic figure, at least now, is the Don Draper of the world coming up with a marketing slogan and talking down to the women that worked on his team because they were seen as someone that should be in the typing pool, not as marketing executives. So women have worked and the world is working to get out of that set of behaviors and women are being given more and more opportunity but haven't necessarily had a chance to be heard and so it seems like there is an uphill fight to have an equal footing in the workplace that is going to take time mm -hmm. and you said something that i thought was really interesting which is women need a place to be heard and I absolutely understand the value of that. And I don't think that is a female specific trait. I think that any group that has not been given a fair amount of opportunity and that is being cultivated needs to be able to collect themselves and talk amongst themselves to pick the right course because they're charting new territory. Absolutely. I think that's true of any sort of niche. If you want to talk about Xbox, for example, you're not going to do that in a chess group. You want to talk about like things with like people. So no matter who you are, you need a forum to do that. And then you can come back to the greater community with your contributions in that way. But sometimes you need to maybe vet some things with your own group first. So having these kind of more niche kind of groups are extremely helpful. And right now, women in general is one of the groups that needs this. Will we always need that? Maybe not. Maybe once we get to a point where there is less divide across genders, then, you know, maybe we won't need groups like these. That's a hope of mine. But right now, they're really helpful. They give you a chance to voice your thoughts, opinions, questions, challenges, get some feedback in a more closed environment, and then go about your day. <laughs> okay. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, originally your purpose was to create a group where women can be found for speaking opportunities. Talk to me about some of the things that you find are important for women to think about when they're looking for speaking opportunities and how to find them. Oh, well, that's a great question. So I think one of the things that women should look at when they're looking specifically for speaking opportunities is to look at past conferences and see um, what the panel makeup or speaker makeup was. And if you see that there's an opportunity to maybe approach a particular conference that hasn't had large representation of women, maybe bring that to their attention. Maybe they hadn't done that on purpose. Maybe it's just who they happened to have available or who they happen to know in their networks. But be proactive in looking for those events that haven't had great diversity and maybe bring that to their attention. Tell them how you can contribute not only from a topic perspective, but also from a diversification perspective. Yeah, I think that's a nice way for women to use their gender as an asset, which is, hey, most people want to have more diversity in the groups that they're collecting. And in reality, there aren't as many women who are reaching out to be speakers or that have been speakers and that are as easily visible. So basically, you can do more outbound marketing because the inbound marketing is going to be less likely for women speakers. I'm just talking about the history of men speaking in marketing. There's a lot more men than there have been women. So you can use that as an asset and do some outreach and say, you should have a woman on your panel. I feel I'm qualified. Book me. Yeah. And here's why I'm qualified. Definitely need to include that. We don't need to have people trying to book women just because they're women. That's the opposite of the point. <laughs> Absolutely. It's counterproductive to have non-qualified women speaking and not being able to speak articulately. There are plenty of women who could speak articulately in marketing. We've tried to have as many of them on the show as we possibly can. And I mentioned the first female podcast guest was 11 episodes into this podcast. So it was basically 10 men and then one woman. And I think that we've had a total of 10 to 15 women on the show out of a roughly 100 episodes. It's about 15% of the people who either reached out to us or that were in my professional network. So basically, anytime a woman reaches out to me that is a valid candidate for the MarTech podcast, I would love to have them on to have more diversity and inclusion. And you know, as somebody who's not necessarily booking speaking events, but giving a forum for people to talk publicly... That's just the numbers of what I've seen is it's a one in 10 to have a woman on a panel and it should be a 50-50 if you ask me. 
Yeah, when we were helping Bunker Labs with their weekly live show, The Breakdown, it's focused on the veteran community and the veterans who want to become entrepreneurs. So veterans as a whole is a largely male community to begin with to find speakers that are also women veterans who also want to be entrepreneurs is an even smaller sample size to work with. But we were still able to get about 40% of representation of women over the past year. So it's possible. Even with a narrow audience or a narrow sample size, you can still actually make it happen. But I wanted to tell you that we have a group of over 300 women that you can pull from for your future podcasts if you'd like to have more women in MarTech. <laughs> so Absolutely. And one of the things that we should do is we should have at least a Women in MarTech week to tell some of the stories that women have had and talk about their career pathing. I think that would be a great way to use this forum to promote women being visible and public about their career successes. And I would love to use this forum as a way to do that. Outside of public speaking, one of the things that you've mentioned is the purpose of the group is cross-collaboration. Talk to me about what that means. So cross-collaboration can mean a variety of things. When I was using that word to describe the group and one of its purposes is to collaborate on things together. Is someone looking for to fill a role at their company? great, let's use that forum as a way to find someone who has availability, whether they're freelance or looking for a full-time job. Beyond being a way to fill roles and being a job board, quote unquote, how can people help each other solve problems? And that's been, I think, where we've seen the most activity in the Facebook group is, for example, hey, I'm having an issue with, let's just say, Salesforce. I'm trying to build this campaign. XYZ is happening. Has anyone had this issue before? And then there's a great discussion on, that's weird, I've never seen that. Or yes, I've had that problem. Here's a way to solve that. So collaboration, just solving problems together or being able to navigate HR issues, potentially. There's been a few cases where the group is only three months old and we've already had a few women talk about cases with their bosses, potentially being either sexual harassment or unfair treatment in the workplace. So, you know, places to collaborate on those types of topics as well. Interesting. The last question that I have for you today, talk to me about your vision for the future of the Women in MarTech group. I know that you started off trying to build a database for women to find speaking engagement, and you've grown a community out of this. It's early days. What's the direction you want to take this, and what's your long-term vision? I think that one is really making the directory as it stands now more public. So getting it online in some format so that people can really go there and see who are the women in MarTech. So it's more easy to facilitate those connections for speaking events. Right now, it's all people email me and I connect them on a one-to-one basis. I'd love to scale that. So I think that's the first initial step. Beyond that, I would love to grow this into a podcast of our own or a video series or really blow out the community aspect of it and to really just get as many women involved as possible from all MarTech specialties. Yeah, it sounds like the marketing plan here is, A, you've built a community using Facebook, and I know that you have a database, but making that database publicly available and then potentially going to different forms of content to allow women to express some of the challenges, how they've overcome adversity and their successes in the workplace. Exactly. And there's an application that you can fill out. And one of the questions that we ask is, are you interested in these things? And some of those things include mentorship. Would you want to contribute articles? Would you want to be mentored? all of those kinds of questions. So try to build this with a future focus of making it more than just a Facebook group or just a directory. So ideally down the line, we're able to make this a proper community, a proper channel of its own, where it can be a great resource for women in the future. And for those of us, myself included, the men in the world that want to support diversity and equality in our industry, how do you envision men supporting the Women in MarTech group? Well, one would be if there's a woman that you work with or a woman that you know of that is in your world that might be interested in this, is a great candidate for this, definitely pass on the information. I think that's the easiest way. That's how we got connected. You saw my LinkedIn post or someone tagged you and you tagged a bunch of other women. And that's great. That's exactly the kind of support we're looking for. 
Well, let me just say, I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I recognize that creating the community for women in MarTech is something that you're doing outside of your day-to-day job. And I do believe that while it might seem to some guys out there that a women in MarTech group has some sort of adverse reaction, like men versus women. And the more that I've interviewed women for this show, the more that I appreciate how this is women supporting other women, not necessarily being in conflict with men who are in the same industry. And the more that we have more qualified people, the more that we're able to have inclusion and diversity in our industry, in business, in the the world, the better off we will all be. So I am happy to be a supporter of the Women in MarTech group. I'm very grateful for you creating a group and for coming on the show. For anyone who is listening, we're going to recap all of this in our outro, but specifically sprk slash d.com slash women in martech. That's the link sparked with a dash before the d.com slash women in martech. It'll bring you to the forum to sign up for the group. Guys that are out there, see, I said guys, not girls, <laughs> feel free to share the link with your female colleagues, with your wives, your sisters, your mothers, anybody that you think is qualified. And Christine, thank you for creating the group and for being brave enough to not only work on highlighting this issue, but coming on the show and talking about how gender plays a role in marketing, which is obviously a difficult topic to talk about. So thank you for being a guest on our show. Thank you for providing this forum to have this discussion. This is an excellent example of how men can be an ally. Awesome. Okay. On that note, I think that we've covered a lot of ground. Hopefully we didn't dance too hard on the third rail. Hopefully you know where to find and how to find the Women in MarTech group. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech podcast. Thanks again to Christine Mortensen, the founder of Sparked and the Women in MarTech group for joining us. To learn more about Christine, you can click on the link to her bio in our show notes, or you can tweet her at C Mortensen. That's C-M-O-R-T-E-N-S-E-N. You can visit her company website, which is sparked, S-P-R-K-D.com. And if you're interested in joining the Women in Marketing group, or if you want to share the Women in Marketing group with a woman that you know, you can go to sprk-d.com, sparked.com, slash women in martech. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, don't worry, we've got you covered. Just head over to martechpod.com, where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for all of our guests. If you're a subscriber to the MarTech Podcast, thank you for being a member of our community. We always want to hear from you. So we created benjshap.com slash question, where you can send us your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you could always reach out on social media too. My handle is benjshap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P on LinkedIn and on Twitter. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a weekly stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we've got great episodes lined up for you. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed sometime time soon. Okay, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is just focus on keeping your customers happy.